I'm a Canadian, and I hadn't left the country in over 10 years, but I was getting sick of the igloos and the not-so-great free healthcare, so on April 28th, a day before my birthday, I flew out to New York to celebrate there. But this video has nothing to do with that. No word of a lie, literally 5 minutes before my flight to New York, I confirmed yet another trip to the States. After I got back from New York, I started packing to go 2,000 kilometers away, waiting for me were the beautiful palm trees of Orlando, Florida. Although I definitely got my fair share of fun and relaxation, I was there for business. SAS, the analytics company, invited me to their Innovate event to interview these people. These are seriously important folks. Not gonna lie, I was pretty nervous speaking to such powerful individuals. These people have key roles to play in society's biggest game ever, the generative AI war. How this plays out will truly shape the role of our society, positive or negative, existential or extinct. Here is that conversation, here you go. It's hard to predict, you know, what's going to be possible in 10 years. I mean, if you watch how AI has exploded in the last couple of years, it's almost like an exponential growth curve. A model trained with probably the most data that any model has been trained with. Disruption is a word here quite often around something like this, right? We don't allow our developers to use it for code development. Mm -hmm. We are extremely careful about giving away intellectual property to a public sphere, you know, which we don't know about. These large language models and ChatGPT and it, and it really becoming mainstream, I think everyone's a bit on edge about what that means in terms of future of some of these jobs, for yeah. sure. For most of us, that's, that's new language to our legal frameworks. I, I think I would be remiss if I would just say, well, no, I think everything's going to be fine. We've seen it, it can write code for you, right? Maybe it's only 80% correct and and, and you need to iterate with it or just take it and, and go you know, from there yourself, that's huge time savings. I don't think it necessarily eliminates those jobs. It might eliminate the volume of those jobs. I mean, you're not gonna need as many people to get as much done. The whole interaction with the system is way more convenient because it's like mm -hmm. a chat, right? There are real practical issues that we can deal with right now if we're really concerned about humanity. Am I of the opinion that we need to have adult discussions around how to create regulations for that technology? I will say, of course, yes, because any technology needs regulation. What I can tell you, it feels like an amalgamation of, we'll call it information. So we probably shouldn't be surprised that it has collection of our intelligence. It's mostly a question of what happens to the data mm -hmm. once we entered into the system, yeah. right? If you're a government agency, for example, you don't want to put your, your, your questions or your prompts or your data into ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to put it into Azure OpenAI. Their data won't be used to train the algorithm. So mm, right. their data is their data, private, it's, uh, it's, it's safe there. I think there are far too many conversations about the pending doom of humanity. <laughs> really seductive to get into the conversation about super intelligence and what that means yeah. for humanity and all those sorts of things. Our image of AI is way too much influenced by Hollywood, yeah. right? You know, where we basically are afraid of the, you know, robots which will take over the world, you know. I, I just can't buy into that. I like to call myself a realistic optimist. I think it's an overall net good. Very much mm -hmm. like any other technology or tool has been a net good. I think it certainly represents progress. It represents, mm -hmm. in some regards, the best of our creativity. There's several different use cases that are sort of bubbling up for government agencies. For example, one is around summarization. I think, you know, AI will be so integrated in our technology that it's not even worth talking about it. Mm -hmm. It should be a familiar pattern for us as, you know, as societies are concern. All we're doing is simply saying we're bringing in a new technology, a new set of capabilities. The way I always say these things that are kind of paradigm shifts and transformative in nature, there's going to be other tasks and other jobs that will come in, probably in, in this case, you know, maybe more on the validation side. If you are creating marketing material or emails, you know, especially if you're not a native speaker, tools like ChatGP are actually quite awesome, right? So you can basically get a first draft and then you just adjust it. For the past three, three or four months has been almost an everyday thing for oh, me wow. as far as working with uh, government agencies and working with our teams and our partners to help us position our technology to the benefit of, of, of government agencies. We are really honest to ourselves as an industry is at the very beginning where we just took the next step from what we used to call analytics and statistics, whatever, based on probabilistic models looking at data and trying to find patterns in that data. This is all new. Obviously data feeds everything. There are opportunities 
opportunities to enrich and enhance your data throughout that whole analytics lifecycle for many reasons. Sometimes you just don't have data, which plays right into the trustworthy AI aspect of it. Make sure you have good representation. So we're doing a lot in the area of synthetic data generation, all under that umbrella of generative AI, which also includes things like digital twins and of course, large language models. Are you afraid of your phone, right? I mean, your phone is ex extremely smart device. Does that mean that you are scared? I mean, are you locking away your phone overnight because you're afraid that it will kill you while you're yeah. sleeping, right? You know. Why not think about how AI might help with a, some of the border crises that exists mm -hmm. around our world? I mean, we should be able to predict population movement, right? Why not use AI to figure out how we can help bolster economies of developing nations? ChatGDP is just the next progression of where we were heading with AI anyway, like speech to text, you know, yeah. um, recognizing uh, images, you know, that's something which we've been doing for years, right? I have not quite gotten, I press the prompt and then the world ends. Like, yeah. I, I, there, there's a lot of leaps of faith. Yeah. <laughs>